It's nine o'clock on Easter Monday morning. Everyone else is still in bed. I love this time of day on holidays and at weekends. I've got some time to myself, I can gather my thoughts. So I thought, perfect opportunity for us to have a chat. <laughs> Louis's always been into drawing, ever since he could hold a pen. I've got these memories of him sitting at this little desk. It was like a high chair thing. It could tip on its side to make a little chair and desk. He'd draw for hours with felt pens. He had felt pen all over his clothes. I think it's really important that you let your kids be as creative as possible and not worry about the mess. You know, you can always wipe the felt pen off things and wash their clothes and repaint a wall if necessary. The most important thing is to encourage their creativity. And his love for art and drawing went all the way through to A-level. He did A-level fine art and he did graphic design. He even did this amazing animation project for A-level. I'm sure he's got a showreel somewhere that he could show you. Absolutely amazing little cartoon thing with him as a character and some of his friends. But I'm sure you all know Louis is quite a sensitive and insightful person as well. And I remember one occasion where we were sitting drawing together. He was quite young, he was about eight or something. And I'd drawn this picture of how I was feeling at the time. It was in two halves. It was There was a happy half. It was all colourful with pictures of friends and so on. And then there was not an unhappy half, but it was like grey and tumbleweed. I think it's quite important to communicate to your kids where you're at as well and how you're feeling. It gives them a sense of reality of what life is all about. But Louis took one look at this drawing and he said, well the problem is there's something missing from this half of the picture, pointing to the happy half. He said it's a bin to put all the rubbish from this side in. I was astonished. I've used that example loads if I've been trying to deal with something myself or I've been talking to other people that are going through issues, put it in the bin. It's in the past. It's history. Fact number two. Fact number two. We were talking in one of my other vlogs about family traits and things, and Louis inherited a little trait. He's a little bit tight with money. And I've got a story that demonstrates how I had to deal with this from the both of them, him and his father. We were on a camping holiday in the south of France, and it was quite a while after Louis and Hilary had both left home. But they still wanted to come on holiday with us. But Louis could only make the first week, and Hilary could make the second week. So what we had to do was take Louis to Barcelona airport really early in the morning and then Hilary was arriving later in the afternoon. But Barcelona was about a three hour drive from where we were camping in France. So we thought to make sure that we got there in time for the flight, we'd go down the night before and find a cheap place to stay, like a hostel or something. We had Darcy with us as well and she was quite little, I think she was about five. But we got there and we couldn't find anywhere cheap. Well, we couldn't find anywhere. There was no room at the inn. And then eventually we found this hotel that had a family room for 120 euros or 110 euros. Not cheap, but a roof over our heads for the night. Bearing in mind we had a little five-year-old with us. But oh no, that was too much money to spend on a few hours sleep. And they said we'd have to sleep in the car. So they found this spot on a deserted lane that was by a piece of waste ground with dogs howling on it. We had a Volvo estate and we put the back seats down and Ben and I slept in the back and Darcy slept across the passenger and the driver's seat and Louis decided he was going to sleep on top of the car. So we were just settling down to sleep and a car came down this deserted lane and I don't know if he'd been drinking a bit or got distracted by this being on top of this car with dreadlocks but he drove into a tree. So then all the emergency services came down and there were sirens and we just laid low. And then all that died down and it started to rain. So Louis decided he was going to come inside the car and it was hot and uncomfortable and you could hear the mosquitoes buzzing. And in the morning, after not much sleep at all, we had a look at Darcy and she was covered in bites. She looked like she had measles or chicken pox. So I determined after that, I don't know why I didn't put my foot down in the first place, to always use my hard earned cash to make sure I had a roof over my head. Fact number three, Louis the entrepreneur. Louis's always been quite entrepreneurial and when he was a teenager he wasn't really that interested in stacking the shelves at Sainsbury's or anything. And I noticed quite a few of you commented when he posted the video of the junior decorator competition that he should go into interior design. Well he did. He set up a website, he had a business card, he called it Interior Environments. He had quite a few commissions. I remember two quite big commissions. One was a shop fitting, it was a children's clothes shop called Giraffe. And he did these amazing murals with elephants and a savannah landscape and a giraffe, of course. And of course there was a waterfall as well. And another one was a Star Wars themed room. 
I think it was after that that he decided it wasn't for him, it was a bit too solitary. But he raised enough money to go on a trip to Mexico with school and actually he vlogged that whole thing. So I think fact number four needs to be Louis the vlogger. He'd raised enough money through the interiors work to buy a video camera and even two years before that when we went to Malaysia he travel logged the whole thing on a handheld audio cassette recorder. I've still got the tape somewhere. Fact number five, the truth about the dreadlocks. When Louis was about 10 that's when he decided he wanted to have dreadlocks when he grew up. So he started growing his hair then. Then when he got to 18 and he'd left school, he phoned up a hairdresser in Brixton and booked an appointment. But when we arrived, the girl took one look at him. She was really shocked that he was white. She said, I've never done a white person's hair before. I'll phone my mate in Kennington. So off we went to Kennington the next day. Louis was quite shy at that time. And there was all these black dudes just like, my goodness, what is this crazy white guy doing? And they started off by backcombing his hair and it was really long, so it was like this. So he sat in silence with these black dudes staring at him for four hours, that's how long it took. Now I'm not a dreadlock expert and we probably need some tips from experts, but Louis told me at the time that you don't wash dreadlocks. They need to develop their own ecosystem. Do you know what goat's cheese smells like? You could smell when he'd entered the room. But then, after four years, it was completely neutralized. The ecosystem had developed. So that's why you see him hair drying his dreadlocks after he gets them wet. You know how when you get caught in the rain and you've got a woolen coat on or you've got a woolen picnic blanket and if, it, and if it stays down too long you get this kind of smile, you know, like sheep. Well that's the truth about the dreadlocks. Well I'm sure I've filled up more than five minutes in this vlog. I don't think I've said anything too incriminating. I love you Louis.